I never thought anything strange could come from this day. On a rather sunny day, I filled up the trash bin next to my street with the garbage that had been filling my home. I knew that the dumpster truck would be around soon to empty it, as it always has been every day. And seeing as I had nothing else to do with the morning, I decided that it would be the proper time to go for a quick five-minute jog to the next block downtown. In fact, the temperature was the perfect spot so that I never really got too hot till the end of my jog. As I was walking back to my home as part of the cool-down, I was shocked at what I found. The trash in the bin had not been picked up, but rather was strewn all about the street. Bark's root beer cans were littered around the bin in a circle along with various other bits of debris, and the black trash bag that I had placed the unwanted material into appeared to be emptied completely and was just laid on top of the can. Wondering what could have happened, I began to clean up the unexpected mess. However, as I was about to place one of the Barks cans back into the bag, it seemed as if the sack wasn't completely empty. I curiously peered into it to find an old Super Nintendo cartridge. I didn't remember throwing out something like that recently. In fact, every SNES game that I had ever bought before is sitting in my basement. I figured maybe whoever lived at the trash everywhere did this, so I took the game out and examined it. What was on it surprised me. I know there's a lot of stories about games that have labels torn off or just suspicious looking cartridges to begin with. However, this label actually seemed professional in the making. The only thing off about it was the premise of this game as shown by the label. The title of the game was simply My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, similar to how it's titled just by the show's name on the iOS game. The Generation 4 character models were even present on the cartridge as well. Twilight Sparkle, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and all of the other main characters were present. This was especially odd since this version of the show came out in 2010, which was way after the time of anyone making SNES cartridges for a profit. I then thought back to a particular game known as Battle Kid for the original NES. Someone had actually programmed that for an old system long after it was abandoned by most developers. In fact, the guy was even selling a physical copy of it to people for a small profit. After remembering this, I figured maybe it was some fan developer that wanted to share his or her creation with someone else. I was rather curious as to why it had to be done in such a messy manner, though. They could have just left the game on my doorstep. I would have gladly sat down to play it. As I was beginning to walk back into my home, I noticed that the back of the cartridge didn't feel as smooth as it should have. My fingers slid over a rough patch somewhere. I flipped this supposed game over as I noticed one piece of tape on the back. In black marker, and almost seeming as if it was in Times New Roman font, it read, I'm sharing the magic. Signed, T.S. T.S. Those are the same initials as those of Tara Strong, the voice actor whose Twilight Sparkle within the show that this game is based on. I thought that it was cool that whoever made this has also gotten the approval of one awesome voice actor as well. I remember seeing a saying somewhere once before that described, whatever Tara Strong touches turns to gold. And seeing as I've yet to see anything terribly bad come out of whatever she's a part of, I thought that that saying would have some merit in determining how good this game really was. I think I've rambled enough about how I managed to come across this game. I think it's time to describe what came from playing it. When I first booted it up, I was surprised to see that the 16-bit sprites within the game actually closely resembled what the six main ponies in the show look like. They were sitting in front of what is Fluttershy's home in the show. They seemed to be relaxing with a nice little picnic. Twilight was reading another book as usual. Fluttershy seemed to be resting along with her pet bunny Angel. Rainbow Dash could be seen just lying down on her back with some sunglasses on. Pinkie Pie seemed to be focused on, well, waiting for something to come out from underneath the picnic rag. I don't know. She's hard to figure out in the show, too. Rarity and Applejack just had their backs against a tree. All this was covered with the classic logo which read, My Little Pony. 
most impressive yet was the audio. It was a classic remix of Pinkie Pie's Smile song from the show, which is one of my favorites of all time. It always seemed to cheer me up on my worst days, and hearing it through an SNES sound chip was just... Huh, beautiful. I knew this game actually had some effort put into it. After I was getting over the beauty of the smile track, I pressed start to start the game. The first few screens explained the basic controls that I would have to use to get past certain obstacles. If anything, the gameplay was similar to what Trine had to offer, in which you would have to use all of your characters to get past certain obstacles. For example, Rainbow Dash would be necessary to remove thunderclouds and fly over things, while Fluttershy could be used to tame and walk past any large living creatures that you would happen to run past. Of course, the inanimate objects, along with several other threats, Twilight, was always there to work her magic. Pinkie Pie was able to launch a party cannon attack, which somehow managed to turn enemies and projectiles into some sort of cake batter. Applejack's main purpose was bucking all the apples out of a tree for more food in the event that your party's health got too low. Apple trees were very rare in this game, though. It would only provide a maximum of three apples when bucked. And Rarity was simply used for the majority of stealthy portions of the game, in which you would have to get past a guard or avoid being detected as you had to use one of several of her outfits to blend in with your surroundings. Now that I got that lengthy description out of the way, it's time to describe what's truly frightening about this experience. After playing through a majority of these levels for about an hour, I came across a level simply titled Stage 16. Stop. I thought that was odd. The way stop was written was also unnerving as it almost seemed uh, small drops of blood were dripping from each of the red letters. As the level faded into view, I was horrified by what I saw. Dead, lifeless trees that seemed more like Nintendo 64 graphics were appearing on the screen. The sky was also blackened with a slight hint of red. The ground that I had been walking on was gray instead of the lively colors that I had seen before. The character who was on the screen was Fluttershy, who seemed more worried than usual. The freakiest part of all of this was the playing of the Smile Song in reverse. This version wasn't even the 16-bit version from the title screen. It sounded like an actual instrumental of the song just played in reverse. I was beyond words at this point. Whoever made this game was a sick, twisted individual. Confused why there was a sudden change of atmosphere, I decided to move forward, only to see a giant, bony black hand come out of the ground and grab Fluttershy. She was crushed within the same instant, blood running into every direction. The game had never been this graphic with a character's death before. In fact, there was never any blood in the event that a character had temporarily fainted. Deciding to try a different approach to overcome the obstacle of the hand, I thought that I could use Rainbow Dash to fly well above and over it. However, to my horror, the hand reached up all the way to the blackened sky and still crushed poor Dash with that same grip that had gotten the best of me before. Maybe Pinkie Pie would help me accomplish something with an instant stroke of luck. Nope. She was crushed into a giant pool of blood as well. I tried switching to Twilight to see if I could use her magic to get across, but the game was bugged and would not let me at this point. I thought maybe I could use Rarity to get across with a camouflage disguise of sorts. No such luck. That camouflage was soon bloodstained. I tried switching to Twilight again, but she still wasn't selectable. Applejack was my last hope. Of course, she was crushed as easily as someone would bite into a single apple. I had given up all hope of beating this game, when the game suddenly put Twilight into control. In fact, I was no longer pressing any buttons. Twilight was just casually strolling past the spot where the other five members of my party were brutally crushed as if they were toothpicks. And after she reached the edge of the screen, a dialogue box appeared. Princess Celestia was right! Friends really do come in handy when you need them. After I pressed A to remove the dialog box, the reverse smile song had stopped, and it was dead silent for about ten more seconds, then another dialog box appeared. Their potential was exceedingly great. It even felt so good to possess it for myself. I feel as if I can accomplish anything now. 
What kind of sick madness was this? This was not the Twilight that I knew from the show. She would never harm her friends just for her own personal gain. Would she? Then Twilight turned directly towards me. I could see a red pixelated glowing in her eyes as she just stared at me intently. I'm only merely doing what you've been doing this whole entire time. I'm using my friends as a means of escaping my current life. You've grown bored of your own life in the same way I have mine. It's time to move on. Using them. How is anything that she's done even remotely compared to my feelings? Almost as if in response to my question, she's answered. Your own life is empty, as was mine. You turned elsewhere to keep yourself entertained. You needed a purpose. I found mine, but it seems as if you still need to find yours. At this point, a very disturbing image of Twilight was with an unsettling smile, just like the one seen in the episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic titled Lesson Zero. That smile sent shivers down my spine when I saw it in the show. But this far tops what that detail. Everything about this seemed as if a real-life photograph had been snapped with a high-quality camera. Her eyes were completely missing. Beyond each of the sockets was just a black void. The mouth was almost toothless. There was no tongue or any other features within it. Just a black void as the eyes were. And at this point, text just splattered across the screen, almost as if each letter stroke was carved with a bloody knife. The text read, I'm sharing the magic. At this point, a loud ear-piercing scream suddenly came out of my speakers. I covered my ears in a vain attempt to block out the sound, but it was still coming through. I fumbled with the power button on the SNES for a few seconds, and the sound finally stopped as the game was shut off. I ejected the game cartridge, and I left it sitting on my kitchen table. I knew that I had to share this experience with anyone, and I needed all the proof that I could get to show everyone my case was real. However, I felt really tired despite the time only being about one in the afternoon, so I figured a quick nap wouldn't hurt me too much. During this quick nap, I happened to have a strange dream. I felt like I was walking down a street in my original hometown of Ballville, Connecticut. I was just casually walking down the street when I stopped in front of someone's trash bin. I madly ravaged through the person's trash receptacle for whatever strange reason, littering all kinds of trash here and there. I also happened to take something out of a bag that I had somehow been carrying. That something was the cursed cartridge that I managed to come across earlier. And so far, the front label looked normal. But then it mutated into the shape of the frightening image of Twilight that I had described earlier. Scared to even look at it for more than a few seconds, I dropped the cartridge and ran away from the residence as fast as I could. And when I woke up from the stream, I was relieved that I was still in my house. However, the oddest part was that looking at my kitchen table, I noticed that the game was missing. But I could have sworn that I had left the game there. As I was madly searching around my home, I got frustrated and knew that it was futile to try searching for the game but I was getting more and more stressed out with every minute. So I decided to take a break and check my email. My mother had sent me an email detailing a strange incident that happened to her home that morning. Someone had gone and messed with her trash, just like what had done with me earlier. She made no mention of a game, though. However, I knew that she probably thought the game was just more garbage. She wasn't very interested in gaming to begin with. I didn't bother asking her about it as it seemed like a weird question coming straight out of left field at the time. Plus, there was the slight fact that what I had dreamt about was actually what I had done. I don't know where the game is right now. Maybe. It finally got hauled off to the dump where it belongs. Maybe my mother got a crazy idea to actually play it, and now she had to suffer the same torment that I did, while involuntarily passing it on to someone else. Whoever it is, be careful when you're playing it. 
if that twilight had enough power to control people's actions in the real world, then who knows what she'll be capable of doing soon.